FA Cup. The FA Cup, known officially as the Football Association Challenge Cup, is an annual knockout football competition in men's domestic English football. First played during the 1871 72 season, it is the oldest national football competition in the world. It is organized by and named after the Football Association, the FA. For sponsorship reasons, from 2015 through to 2018, it is also known as the Emirates FA Cup. A concurrent women's tournament is also held, the FA Women's Cup. The competition is open to any eligible club down to level 10 of the English Football League system, all 92 professional clubs in the Premier League, level 1 in the English Football League, levels 2 to 4, and several hundred non-league teams in steps 1 to 6 of the National League system, levels 5 to 10. A record 763 clubs competed in 2011-12. The tournament consists of 12 randomly drawn rounds followed by the semi-finals and the final. Entrants are not seeded, although a system of buys based on league level ensures higher ranked teams enter in later rounds. The minimum number of games needed to win the competition ranges from 6 to 14. The first six rounds of the qualifying competition, from which 32 teams progress to the first round of the competition proper, meeting the first of the 48 professional teams from leagues 1 and 2. The last entrants are the Premier League and Championship clubs, into the draw for the third round proper. In the modern era, only one non league team has ever reached the quarterfinals, and teams below level 2 have never reached the final. As a result, as well as who wins, significant focus is given to those minnows, smaller teams, who progress furthest, especially if they achieve an unlikely giant killing victory. Winners receive the FA Cup trophy, of which there have been two designs and five actual cups. The latest is a 2014 replica of the second design, introduced in 1911. Winners also qualify for the Europa League and a place in the FA Community Shield match. Chelsea are the current holders, having beaten Manchester United 1-0 in the 2018 final. Arsenal are the most successful club with 13 titles. Arsene Wenger is the most successful manager in the history of the competition, having won seven finals as manager of Arsenal. In 1863, the newly founded Football Association, the FA, published the laws of the game of association football, unifying the various different rules in use before then. On July 20, 1871, in the offices of the Sportsman newspaper, the FA Secretary C.W. Alcock proposed to the FA committee that it is desirable to have a Challenge Cup should be established in connection with the association for which all clubs belonging to the association should be invited to compete. The inaugural FA Cup tournament kicked off in November 1871. After 13 games in all, Wanderers were crowned the winners in the final, on March 16, 1872. Wanderers retained the trophy the following year. The modern cup was beginning to be established by the 1888-89 season, when qualifying rounds were introduced. Following the 1914-15 edition, the competition was suspended due to the First World War, and did not resume until 1919-20. The 1922-23 competition saw the first final to be played in the newly opened Wembley Stadium, known at the time as the Empire Stadium. Due to the outbreak of World War II, the competition was not played between the 1938-39 and 1945-46 editions. Due to the wartime breaks, the competition did not celebrate its centenary year until 1980-81. Fittingly the final featured a goal by Ricky Villa which was later voted the greatest goal ever scored at Wembley Stadium, but has since been replaced by Steven Gerrard. Having previously featured replays, the modern-day practice of ensuring the semi-final and final matches finish on the day, was introduced from 2000 onwards. Redevelopment of Wembley saw the final played outside of England for the first time, the 2001-2006 finals being played at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. The final returned to Wembley in 2007 followed by the semi-finals from 2008. The competition is open to any club down to level 10 of the English Football League system which meets the eligibility criteria. All clubs in the top four levels, the Premier League and the three divisions of the Football League, are automatically eligible. Clubs in the next six levels, non-league football, are also eligible provided they have played in either the FA Cup, FA Trophy or FA Base competitions in the previous season. Newly formed clubs, such as FC United of Manchester in 2005-06 and also 2006-07, may not therefore play in the FA Cup in their first season. All clubs entering the competition must also have a suitable stadium. It is very rare for top clubs to miss the competition, although it can happen in exceptional circumstances. 
Manchester United did not defend their title in 1999-2000, as they were already in the inaugural Club World Championship. The club stated that entering both tournaments would overload their fixture schedule and make it more difficult to defend their Champions League and Premier League titles. The club claimed that they did not want to devalue the FA Cup by fielding a weaker side. The move benefited United as they received a two-week break and won the 1999-2000 league title by an 18-point margin, although they did not progress past the group stage of the club world championship. The withdrawal from the FA Cup, however, drew considerable criticism as this weakened the tournament's prestige and Sir Alex Ferguson later admitted his regret regarding their handling of the situation. Welsh sides that play in English leagues are eligible, although since the creation of the League of Wales there are only six clubs remaining. Cardiff City, the Onlin and English team to win the tournament Indiana 1927, Swansea City, Newport County, Wrexham, Merthyr Town, and Colwyn Bay. In the early years other teams from Wales, Ireland and Scotland also took part in the competition, with Glasgow side Queen's Park losing the final to Blackburn Rovers in 1884 and 1885 before being barred from entering by the Scottish Football Association. In the 2013-14 season the first Channel Island club entered the competition when Guernsey FC competed for the first time. The number of entrants has increased greatly in recent years. In the 2004-05 season, 660 clubs entered the competition, beating the long-standing record of 656 from the 1921-22 season. In 2005-06 this increased to 674 entrants, in 2006-07 to 687, in 2007-08 to 731 clubs, and for the 2008-09 and 2009-10 competitions it reached 762. Ref name equals record number of entries for 2008-9s greater than everyone's up for the cup. Friday June 27, 2008 less than slash ref the number has varied slightly but remained roughly stable since then, with 759 clubs participating in 2010-11, a record 763 in 2011-12, 758 for 2012-13, 737 for 2013-14 and 736 for 2014-15. By comparison, the other major English domestic cup, the League Cup involves only the 92 members of the Premier League and Football League. Beginning in August, the competition proceeds as a knockout tournament throughout, consisting of 12 rounds, a semi-final and then a final, in May. A system of buys ensures clubs above level 9 and 10 enter the competition at later stages. There is no seeding, the fixtures in each round being determined via random draw. Prior to the quarter-finals, fixtures ending in a tie are replayed once only. The first six rounds are qualifiers, with the draws organized on a regional basis. The next six rounds are the proper rounds where all clubs are in one draw. Entrants from the bottom two levels, 9 and 10, begin the competition in the extra preliminary round. Clubs from higher levels are then added in later rounds, as per the table below. The months in which rounds are played are traditional, with exact dates subject to each year's calendar. The qualifying rounds are regionalized to reduce the travel costs for smaller non-league sides. The first and second proper rounds were also previously split into northern and southern sections, but this practice was ended after the 1997-98 competition. The final is normally held the Saturday after the Premier League season finishes in May. The only seasons in recent times when this pattern was not followed were in 1999-2000, when most rounds were played a few weeks earlier than normal as an experiment, and 2010-11 and 2012-13 when the FA Cup final was played before the Premier League season had finished, to allow Wembley Stadium to be ready for the UEFA Champions League final, as well as in 2011-12 to allow England time to prepare for that summer's European Championships. The draws for the extra preliminary, preliminary, and first qualifying rounds used to all occur at the same time. Thereafter, the draw for each subsequent round is not made until after the scheduled dates for the previous round, meaning that in the case of replays, clubs will often know their future opponents in advance. This season 2016-17 the draw for the first qualifying round was drawn at a later date as per previous season's later rounds. The draw for each of the proper rounds is broadcast live on television usually taking place at the conclusion of live coverage of one of the games of the previous round. Public interest is particularly high during the draw for the third round, which is where the top-ranked teams are added to the draw. In rounds up to and including the fourth round proper, fixtures resulting in a draw, after normal time, go to a replay, 
played at the venue of the away team, at a later date, if that replay is still tied, the winner is settled by a period of extra time, and if still necessary, a penalty shootout. Since 2016 17, ties have been settled on the day from the quarterfinals onwards, using extra time and penalties. From 2018 19, fifth round ties are also settled by extra time and penalties. Until 1990-91, further replays would be played until one team was victorious. Some ties took as many as six matches to settle. In their 1975 campaign, Fulham played a total of 12 games over six rounds, which remains the most games played by a team to reach a final. Replays were traditionally played three or four days after the original game, but from 1991-92 they were staged at least 10 days later on police advice for the runes proper. This led to penalty shootouts being introduced, the first of which came on November 26, 1991 when Rotherham United eliminated Scunthorpe United. From 1980-81 to 1998-99, the semi-finals went to extra time on the day if the score after 90 minutes was a draw. If the score was still level after extra time, the match would go to a replay. Replays for the semi-finals were scrapped for 1999-2000. The last semi-final to go into a replay was in 1998-99 when Manchester United beat Arsenal 2-1 after extra time. The first game had ended in a 0-0 draw. The first FA Cup final to go to extra time and a replay was the 1875 final, between the Royal Engineers and the Old Etonians. The initial tie finished 1-1 but the Royal Engineers won the replay 2-0 in normal time. The last replayed final was the 1993 FA Cup final when Arsenal and Sheffield Wednesday fought a 1-1 draw. The replay saw Arsenal win the FA Cup, 2-1 after extra time. The last quarter-final to go to a replay was Manchester United vs West Ham United in the 2015-16 FA Cup. The original game at Old Trafford ended in a 1-1 draw, while Manchester United won the replay at the Berlin ground, 2-1. It was also the last FA Cup game ever played at the Berlin ground. The FA Cup winners qualify for the following season's UEFA Europa League, formerly named the UEFA Cup, from its launch in 1960 until 1998, they entered the now-defunct UEFA Cup Winners' Cup instead. This European place applies even if the team is relegated or is not in the English top flight. In the past, if the FA Cup winning team also qualified for the following season's Champions League or Europa League through their league or European performance, then the losing FA Cup finalists were given the European berth of the League Cup winners and the League Cup winners will be given the League berth instead in the Cup Winners' Cup era. Teams qualifying for the UEFA Cup via other competitions will be promoted to the Cup Winners' Cup instead. FA Cup winners enter the Europa League at the group stage. Losing finalists, if they haven't qualified for Europe via the league, begin earlier, at the playoff or third qualifying round stage. From the 2015-16 UEFA Europa League season, however, UEFA does not allow the runners-up to qualify for the Europa League through the competition. If the winner, and until 2015, the runner-up has already qualified for Europe through their league position, with the exception of the UEFA Cup until 1998, the FA Cup berth is then given to the highest placee team in the league who has not yet qualified. The FA Cup winners also qualify for the following season's single-match FA Community Shield. The traditional season opener played against the previous season's Premier League champions, or the Premier League runners-up if the FA Cup winners also won the league, the double. Fixtures in the 12 rounds of the competition are usually played at the home ground of one of the two teams. The semi-finals and final are played at a new trial venue, the rebuilt Wembley Stadium, since 2008 and 2007 respectively. In the matches for the 12 competition rounds, the team who plays at home is decided when the fixtures are drawn, simply the first team drawn out for each fixture. Occasionally games may have to be moved to other grounds due to other events taking place, security reasons or a ground not being suitable to host popular teams. In the event of a draw, the replay is played at the ground of the team who originally played away from home. In the days when multiple replays were possible, the second replay, and any further replays, were played at neutral grounds. The clubs involved could alternatively agree to toss for home advantage in the second replay. The semi finals have been played exclusively at the rebuilt Wembley Stadium since 2008, one year after it opened and after it had already hosted a final, in 2007. For the first decade of the competition, the Kennington Oval was used as the semi final venue. In the period between this first decade and the reopening off Wembley, 
semi-finals were played at high-capacity neutral venues around England, usually the home grounds of teams not involved in that semi-final, chosen to be roughly equidistant between the two teams for fairness of travel. The top three most used venues in this period were Villa Park in Birmingham 55 times, Hillsborough in Sheffield, 34 times, and Old Trafford in Manchester, 23 times. The original Wembley Stadium was also used seven times for semi-final, between 1991 and 2000, the last held there, but not always for fixtures featuring London teams. In 2005, both were held at the Millennium Stadium. In 2003 the FA took the decision to permanently use the new Wembley for semi-finals to recoup debts in financing the new stadium. This was controversial, with the move seen as both unfair to fans of teams located far from London, as well as taking some of the prestige away from a Wembley final. In defending the move, the FA has also cited the extra capacity Wembley offers, although the 2013 fixture between Millwall and Wigan led to the unprecedented step of placing 6,000 tickets on sale to neutral fans after the game failed to sell out. A fan poll by The Guardian in 2013 found 86% opposition to Wembley semi-finals. The final has been played at the rebuilt Wembley Stadium since it opened, in 2007. The rebuilding process meant that between 2001 and 2006 they were hosted at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff in Wales. Prior to rebuilding, the final was hosted by the original Wembley Stadium since it opened in 1923, being originally named the Empire Stadium. One exception to this 78-year series of Empire Stadium finals, including five replays, was the 1970 replay between Leeds and Chelsea, held at Old Trafford in Manchester. In the 51 years prior to the Empire Stadium opening, the final, including eight replays, was held in a variety of locations, predominantly in London, and mainly at the Kennington Oval and then Crystal Palace. It was played 22 times at the Oval, the inaugural competition in 1872, and then all but two times until 1892. After the Oval, Crystal Palace hosted 21 finals from 1895 to 1914, broken up by four replays elsewhere. The other London venues were Stamford Bridge from 1920 to 1922, the last three finals before the move to Empire Stadium, and the University of Oxford's Lily Bridge in Fulham for the second-ever final, in 1873. The other venues used sparingly in this period were all outside of London, as follows. The FA permitted artificial turf, 3G, pitches in all rounds of the competition from the 2014-15 edition and beyond. Under the 2015-16 rules, the pitch must be of FIFA one-star quality, or two-star for ties if they involve one of the 92 professional clubs. This followed approval two years previously for their use in the qualifying rounds only. If a team with a 3G pitch progressed to the competition proper, they had to switch their tie to the ground of an eligible entrant with a natural grass pitch. Having been strong proponents of the surface, the first match in the proper rounds to be played on a 3G surface was a televised first-round replay at Maidstone United's Gallagher Stadium on November 20, 2014. The eventual winners of the competition received the FA Cup. It is only loaned to the club by the FA, under the current, 2015-16 rules that must be returned by 1 March, or earlier if given seven days' notice. Traditionally, the holders had the cup until the following year's presentation, although more recently the trophy has been taken on publicity tours by the FA in between finals. The trophy comes in three parts, the cup itself, plus a lid and a base. There have been two designs of trophy in use, but five physical trophies have been presented. The original trophy, known as the Little Tin Idol, was 18 inches high and made by Martin, Hall & Company. It was stolen in 1895 and never recovered, and so was replaced by an exact replica used until 1910. The FA decided to change the design after the 1909 winners, Manchester United, made their own replica, leading the FA to realize they did not own the copyright. This new, larger design was by Fotterini and Sons, and was used from 1911. In order to preserve this original, from 1992 it was replaced by an exact replica, although this had to be replaced after just over two decades, after showing wear and tear from being handled more than in previous eras. This third replica, first used in 2014, was built heavier to withstand the increase in handling. Of the four surviving trophies, only the 1895 replica has entered private ownership. The name of the winning team is engraved on the silver band around the base as soon as the final has finished, in order to be ready in time for the presentation ceremony.
This means the engraver has just 5 minutes to perform a task which would take 20 under normal conditions, although time is saved by engraving the year on during the match, and sketching the presumed winner. During the final, the trophy is decorated with ribbons in the colors of both finalists, with the loser's ribbons being removed at the end of the game. The tradition of tying ribbons started after Tottenham Hotspur won the 1901 FA Cup final and the wife of a Spurs director decided to tie blue and white ribbons to the handles of the cup. Traditionally, at Wembley Finals, the presentation is made at the Royal Box, with players, led by the captain, mounting a staircase to a gangway in front of the box and returning by a second staircase on the other side of the box. At Cardiff the presentation was made on a podium on the pitch. The tradition of presenting the trophy immediately after the game did not start until the 1882 final. After the first final in 1872 the trophy was not presented to the winners, Wanderers, until a reception held four weeks later in the Pall Mall restaurant in London. Under the original rules, the trophy was to be permanently presented to any club which won the competition three times, although when inaugural winners Wanderers achieved this feat by the 1876 final, the rules were changed by FA Secretary C.W. Alcock, who was also captain of Wanderers in their first victory. Portsmouth FC have the distinction of being the football club which has held the FA Cup trophy for the longest uninterrupted period, seven years. Portsmouth had defeated Wolverhampton Wanderers 4-1 in the 1939 FA Cup final and were awarded the trophy as 1938-1939 FA Cup champions. But with the outbreak of World War II in September 1939, the regular football league and FA Cup competitions for the 1939-40 season were cancelled for the duration of the war. Portsmouth's manager Jack Tin was rumored to have kept the FA Cup trophy safe under his bed throughout the duration of the war, but this is an urban myth. Because the naval city of Portsmouth was a primary strategic military target for German Luftwaffe bombing, the FA Cup trophy was actually taken 10 miles to the north of Portsmouth, to the nearby Hampshire village of Lovedian, and there it resided in a quaint thatched roof country pub called the Bird in Hand for the seven years of the war. After the conclusion of World War II, the FA Cup trophy was presented back to the Football Association by Portsmouth FC in time for the 1946 FA Cup final. The first trophy, the Little Tin Idol, was made by Martin, Hall & Company at a cost of £20. It was stolen from a Birmingham shoe shop window belonging to William Shilcock while held by Aston Villa on September 11, 1895 and was never seen again. Despite a £10 reward for information, the crime was never solved. As it happened while it was in their care, the FA fined Villa £25 to pay for a replacement. Just over 60 years later, 80-year-old career criminal Henry, Harry, James Birch claimed to have committed the theft, confessing to a newspaper, with the story being published in the Sunday Pictorial newspaper on February 23, 1958. He claimed to have carried out the robbery with two other men, although when discrepancies with a contemporaneous report in the Birmingham Post newspaper, the crime predated written police reports. In his account of the means of entry and other items stolen, detectives decided there was no realistic possibility of a conviction and the case was closed. Birch claimed the cup had been melted down to make counterfeit half crown coins, which matched known intelligence of the time, in which stolen silver was being used to forge coins which were then laundered through betting shops at a local race course, although Birch had no past history of forgery in a record of 42 previous convictions for which he had spent 42 years in prison. He had been further imprisoned in 1957 for seven years for theft from cars. Released in 1961, he died in 1964. After being rendered obsolete by the redesign, the 1895 replica was presented in 1910 to the FA's long serving president Lord Kinnaird. Kinnaird died in 1923, and his family kept it in their possession, out of view, until putting it up for auction in 2005. It was duly sold at Christie's Auction House on May 19, 2005 for £420,000, £478,400 including auction fees and taxes. The sale price set a new world record for a piece of football memorabilia, surpassing the £254,000 paid for the jewels from a World Cup trophy in 1997. The successful bidder was David Gold, the then joint chairman of Birmingham City claiming the FA and government were doing nothing proactive to ensure the trophy remained in the country, Gold stated his purchase was motivated by wanting to save it for the nation. Accordingly, Gold presented the trophy to the National Football Museum in Preston on April 20, 2006, where it went on immediate public display. It later moved with the museum to its new location in Manchester.
In November 2012, it was ceremonially presented to Royal Engineers, after they beat Wanderers 7-1 in a charity replay of the first FA Cup final. The redesigned trophy first used in 1911 was larger at 61.5 cm, 24.2 inches, high, and was designed and manufactured by Fodorini's of Bradford, coincidentally being won by Bradford City in its first outing. On the March 27, 2016 episode of the BBC television programme Antiques Roadshow, this trophy was valued at £1 million by expert Alistair Dickinson, although he suggested that, due to the design featuring depictions of grapes and vines, it may not have been specifically produced for the FA, but was instead an off-the-shelf design originally meant to be a wine or champagne cooler. A smaller, but otherwise identical, replica was also made by Fodorini the North Wales Coast FA Cup trophy, and is contested annually by members of that regional association. The 1992 replica was made by Toy, Kenning, and Spencer. A copy of this trophy was also produced, in case anything happened to the primary trophy. The 2014 replica was made by Thomas Light, handcrafted in sterling 925 silver over 250 hours. A weight increase to increase durability has taken it to each club in the final receives 40 winners or runners-up medals to be distributed among players, staff, and officials. Since the start of the 1994-95 season, the FA Cup has been sponsored. However, to protect the identity of the competition, the sponsored name has always included the FA Cup in addition to the sponsor's name, unlike sponsorship deals for the League Cup where the word cup is preceded by only the sponsor's name. Sponsorship deals run for four years, though. As in the case of E.ON, one year extensions may be agreed. Emirates Airline is the sponsor from 2015 to 2018, renaming the competition as the Emirates FA Cup, unlike previous editions, which included the FA Cup in association with E.ON and the FA Cup with Budweiser. From 2006 to 2013, Umbro supplied match balls for all FA Cup matches. They were replaced at the start of the 2013 14 season by Nike who produced the competition's official match ball for five seasons. Mitre took over for the 2018-19 season, beginning a three-year partnership with the FA. The possibility of unlikely victories in the earlier rounds of the competition, where lower-ranked teams beat higher-placed opposition in what is known as a giant killing, is much anticipated by the public. Such upsets are considered an integral part of the tradition and prestige of the competition and the attention gained by giant killing teams can be as great as that for winners of the cup. Almost every club in the league pyramid has a fondly remember a giant killing act in its history. It is considered particularly newsworthy when a top Premier League team suffers an upset defeat, or where the giant killer is a non-league club, i.e. from outside the professional levels of the football league. One analysis of four years of FA Cup results showed that it was 99.85% likely that at least one team would beat one from its next higher division in a given year. The probability drops to 48.8% for a two-division gap, and 39.28% for a three-division gap. The Football League was founded in 1888, 16 years after the first FA Cup competition. Since the creation of the Football League, Tottenham Hotspur is the only non-league giant killer to win the Cup, taking the 1901 FA Cup with a victory over reigning league runners-up Sheffield United, although at that time, there were only two divisions and 36 clubs in the Football League, and Spurs were champions of the next strongest Football League, the Southern League and probably already good enough for the First Division, as was shown when they joined the Second Division in 1908 and immediately won promotion to the First. Only two other actual non-league clubs have even reached the final since the founding of the league, Sheffield Wednesday in 1890, champions of the Football Alliance, a rival league which was already effectively the second division, which it formally became in 1892, Wednesday being led straight into the first division, and Southampton in 1900 and 1902, in which years they were also Southern League champions, proving the strength of that league, again, they were probably of equivalent standard to a first division club at the time but Southampton's form subsequently faded and they did not join the league till 1920 in the formation of the third division. The most recent examples of a non-league team, levels 5 to 10, beating a level 1 opponent are National League side Lincoln City's away victory over Premier League side Burnley in the 2016-17 FA Cup and Conference Premier side Luton Town's away victory over level 1 Premier League's Norwich City in the 2012-13 fourth round proper. Prior to that game, 
The last time a non-league side defeated a level 1 club was in 1989 when Sutton United claimed a 2-1 victory at home over Coventry City, who had won the FA Cup less than two years prior. In the 1971-72 FA Cup, a non-league side achieved a level 1 giant killing that was voted best FA Cup tie ever in a 2007 poll by the Observer newspaper. Non-league Hereford United was trailing First Division Newcastle United 0-1 with less than 7 minutes left in the third round proper replay, when Hereford's Ronnie Radford scored the equaliser, a goal still shown regularly when FA Cup fixtures are broadcast. Hereford finished the shocking comeback by defeating Newcastle 2-1 in the match. Some small clubs gain a reputation for being cup specialists after two or more giant killing feats within a few years. Yeovil Town holds the record for the most victories over league opposition as a non league team, having recorded 20 wins through the years before it achieved promotion into the Football League. The record for a club which has never entered the Football League is held by Altrincham, with 17 wins against league teams. For non league teams, reaching the third round proper, where all level one sides now enter, is considered a major achievement. In the 2008-09 FA Cup, a record nine non-league teams achieved this feat. As of the 2016-17 season, only nine non-league teams have reached the fifth round proper, final 16, since 1945, and only Lincoln City have progressed to the sixth round, final eight, during the 2016-17 edition of the tournament. Prior to Lincoln's run, Kidderminster Harriers were the last team to reach the fifth round in 1994 where they had a chance to inflict a giant killing of their own against a Premier League side. They were drawn at home against West Ham United in Round 5 but lost 0-1 in a close game at Ickborough. Chase Town, while playing at Level 8 of English football during the 2007-08 competition, are the lowest-ranked team to ever play in the third round proper Final 64, of 731 teams entered that season. Chase Town was then a member of the Southern League Division 1 Midlands, a lower level within the Southern Football League. When they lost a Football League Championship, Level 2, Team Cardiff City, the eventual FA Cup runners-up that year. Their success earned the lowly organization over £60,000 in prize money. In games between league sides, one of the most notable results was the 1992 victory by Wrexham, bottom of the previous season's league, avoiding relegation due to expansion of the Football League, over reigning champions Arsenal. Another similar shock was when Shrewsbury Town beat Everton 2 to 1 in 2003. Everton finished 7th in the Premier League and Shrewsbury Town were relegated to the Football Conference that same season. Since its establishment, the FA Cup has been won by 43 different teams. Teams shown in italics are no longer in existence. Additionally, Queen's Park ceased to be eligible to enter the FA Cup after a Scottish Football Association ruling in 1887. Four clubs have won consecutive FA Cups on more than one occasion, Wanderers, 1872, 1873 and 1876, 1877, 1878, Blackburn Rovers, 1884, 1885, 1886 and 1890, 1891, Tottenham Hotspur, 1961, 2003 and 2014, 2015. The record for most winners' medals for a manager is held by Arsene Wenger, who has won seven titles with Arsenal, 1998, 2002, 2003, 2005, 2014, 2015, 2017. Seven clubs have won the FA Cup as part of a league and cup double, namely Preston North End, 1889, Aston Villa, 1897, Tottenham Hotspur, 1961, Arsenal, 1971, 1998, 2002, Liverpool, 1986, Manchester United, 1994, 1996, 1999, and Chelsea, 2010. In 1993, Arsenal became the first side to win both the FA Cup and the League Cup in the same season when they beat Sheffield Wednesday 2-1 in both finals. Liverpool, in 2001, and Chelsea, in 2007 have since repeated these feet. In 2012, Chelsea accomplished a different cup double consisting of the FA Cup and the 2012 Champions League. Dot in 1998-99, Manchester United added the 1999 Champions League title to their league and cup double to complete a unique treble. Dot two years later, in 2001, Liverpool won the FA Cup, League Cup and UEFA Cup to complete a cup treble.
Example, the FA Cup has only been won by a non-English team once. Cardiff City achieved this in 1927 when they beat Arsenal in the final at Wembley. They had previously made it to the final only to lose to Sheffield United in 1925 and lost another final to Portsmouth in 2008. Cardiff City is also the only team to win the National Cups of two different countries in the same season, having also won the Welsh Cup in 1927. The Scottish team Queen's Park reached and lost the final in both 1884 and 1885. Since the creation of the Football League in 1888, the final has never been contested by two teams from outside the top division, and there have only been eight winners who were not in the top flight, Notts County, 1894, Tottenham Hotspur, 1901, Wolverhampton Wanderers, 1908, Barnsley, 1912, West Bromwich Albion, 1931, Sunderland, 1973, Southampton, 1976, and West Ham United. 1980. With the exception of Tottenham, these clubs were all playing in the second year, the old second division, Tottenham were playing in the Southern League and were only elected to the Football League in 1908, meaning they are the only non-league winners of the FA Cup since the league's creation. Other than Tottenham's victory, only 24 finalists have come from outside English football's top tier, with a record of 7 wins and 17 runners-up, and none at all from the third tier or lower, Southampton, 1902 then in the Southern League, being the last finalist from outside the top two tiers. Sunderland's win in 1973 was considered a major upset, having beaten Leeds United who finished third in the top flight that season, as was West Ham's victory over Arsenal in 1980 as the Gunners were in their third successive FA Cup final and were also the cup holders from the previous year as well as just having finished fourth in the first division whereas West Ham had ended the season 7th in Division 2. This also marked the last time, as of 2017-18 a team from outside the top division won the FA Cup. Uniquely, in 2008 three of the four semi-finalists, Barnsley, Cardiff City and West Bromwich, were from outside the top division, although the eventual winner was the last remaining top flight team, Portsmouth. West Bromwich, 1931 are the only team to have won the FA Cup and earned promotion to the top flight in the same season, whereas Wigan Athletic 2013 are the only team to have won the Cup and been relegated from the top flight in the same season. The FA Cup final is one of 10 events reserved for live broadcast on UK terrestrial television under the Ofcom code on sports and other listed and designated events. In the early years of coverage the BBC had exclusive radio coverage with a picture of the pitch marked in the radio times with numbered squares to help the listener follow the match on the radio. The first FA Cup final on radio was in 1926 between Bolton Wanderers and Manchester City but this was only broadcast in Manchester. The first national final on BBC radio was between Arsenal and Cardiff in 1927. The first final on BBC television was in 1937 in a match which featured Sunderland and Preston North End but this was not televised in full. The following season's final between Preston and Huddersfield was covered in full by the BBC. When ITV was formed in 1955 they shared final coverage with the BBC in one of the only club matches shown live on television. During the 1970s and 1980s coverage became more elaborate with BBC and ITV trying to steal viewers from the others by starting coverage earlier and earlier some starting as early as 9am which was 6 hours before kickoff. Nowadays, this continues with Satanta and ESPN having all-day broadcasts from Wembley, but terrestrial TV coverage usually begins 2 hours before kickoff. The sharing of rights between BBC and ITV continued from 1955 to 1988 when ITV last coverage to the new sports channel which later became Sky Sports. From 1988 to 1997, the BBC and Sky Sports had coverage of the FA Cup, the BBC had highlights on match of the day and usually one match per round while Sky had the same deal. From 1997 to 2001, ITV and Sky shared live coverage with both having two matches per round and BBC continuing with highlights on match of the day. From 2002 to 2008, BBC and Sky again shared coverage with BBC having two or three matches per round and Sky having one or two. From 2008 09 to 2013 14, FA Cup matches are shown live by ITV across England and Wales, with UTV broadcasting to Northern Ireland but STV refusing to show them. ITV shows 16 FA Cup games per season, including the first pick of live matches from each of the first to sixth rounds of the competition, plus one semi final exclusively live. The final is also shown live on ITV. Under the same 2008 contract, 
Satanta Sports showed three games and one replay in each round from round three to five, two quarterfinals, one semi-final and the final. The channel also broadcast ITV's matches exclusively to Scotland, after the ITV franchise holder in Scotland, STV, decided not to broadcast FA Cup games. Satanta entered administration in June 2009 and as a result the FA terminated Satanta's deal to broadcast FA-sanctioned competitions and England internationals. As a result of Satanta going out of business ITV showed the competition exclusively in the 2009-10 season with between three and four matches per round, all quarterfinals, semifinals and final live as the FA could not find a paid broadcaster in time. ESPN bought the competition for the 2010-11-2012-13 season and during this time Rebecca Lowe became the first woman to host the FA Cup final in the UK. In October 2009, the FA announced that ITV would show an additional match in the first and second rounds on ITV, with one replay match shown on ITV4.1 match and one replay match from the first two rounds will broadcast on the FA website for free, in a similar situation to the 2010 World Cup qualifier between Ukraine and England. The 2009-10 first round match between Oldham Athletic and Leeds United was the first FA Cup match to be streamed online live. Many expected B Sky B to make a bid to show some of the remaining FA Cup games for the remainder of the 2009-10 season which would include a semi-final and shared rights to the final. ESPN took over the package Satanta held for the FA Cup from the 2010-11 season. The 2011 final was also shown live on Sky 3D in addition to ESPN, who provided the 3D coverage for Sky 3D, and ITV. Following the sale of ESPN's UK and Ireland channels to BT, ESPN's rights package transferred to BT Sport from the 2013-14 season. BBC Radio 5 Live and TalkSport provides radio coverage including several full-live commentaries per round, with additional commentaries broadcast on local radio. Until the 2008-09 season, the BBC and Sky Sports shared television coverage, with the BBC showing three matches in the earlier rounds. Some analysts argued the decision to move away from the Sky and, in particular, the BBC undermined the FA Cup in the eyes of the public. The early rounds of the 2008-09 competition were covered for the first time by ITV's online service, ITV Local. The first match of the competition, between Wantage Town and Bradding Town, was broadcast live online. Highlights of eight games of each round were broadcast as catch-up on ITV Local. Since ITV Local closed, this coverage did not continue. ITV lasts the rights to the FA Cup beginning with the 2014-15 FA Cup, terrestrial rights will return to BBC Sport, with the final being shown on BBC One Wild Sport hold to pay TV rights. Under this deal, the BBC will show around the same number of games as ITV and still having the first pick for each round. Matches involving Welsh clubs are sometimes exclusively broadcast on Welsh language channel S4C which is also available to view across the rest of the United Kingdom on satellite and cable television, and through the channel's website. A similar arrangement is shared with BBC Cymru Wales from 2014 to 15, potentially giving the BBC an extra match per round. The FA sells overseas rights separately from the domestic contract. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.